Okay, so in this video I'd like to give a quick little demonstration of using the Stoner Python package um, and just start by showing you how it thinks about data files. So um, I've fired up a, a Qt console and I've um, invoked the PyLab magic and I've changed to a directory with some data. So the first thing I need to go and do is import the kind of main object that we use in the Stoner Python package, um, and that's this class called data. So I can just do from Stoner import data, and it comes up and it puts up a warning about matplotlib. Um, that doesn't matter too much at the moment. And then in order to read in a data file from disk, all I do is I use the data um, object, it's a class, um, and it takes um, as a parameter a um, file name like so. Um, so I'm just going to assign that to the variable D and it goes away and does it. Um, at this point you go, whoa, how did that thing know how to read um, a data file? Um, and the answer is is that um, data knows how to read a whole bunch of files. You can get some idea of um, what it knows to read by looking at the subclasses um, attribute. This is just a list of all of the um, subclasses of the the main data class that it can use to read in different file formats. So you see looking at this, there's a whole list of different file formats here, um, and then they correspond to a bunch of different Python uh, classes which live inside the file formats submodule of the Zona package. Um, so we've got things in here that read um, various forms of text files, um, we've got things that read various files from uh, major facilities, um, so the SNS neutron source in the States, or for example OpenGDA comes from the Diamond Light source in the UK, um, um, and, and so on. We've also got some things which belong to sort of relatively standard instruments. Um, so for example Regaka or a manufacturer of X-ray diffraction kit, and we can read their files. Um, our XRD file format is actually reading a Brooker X-ray diffraction setup. SPC is a common spectroscopy file format. Um, and of course, um, you can easily implement new file formats as you need. So the way it works is it simply reads in the file and tries to work out um, which of these various file formats is going to um, work, and it'll pick the first one that appears to be working reasonably well. So in this case, we're using um, uh, this um, file format that is our sort of standard one for our measurement kit. Um, and if I just ask it to show me what this variable D looks like, it gives me a printout. And if I scroll all the way up, you see there's lots and lots of rows. Um, in fact, there are so many rows, it's going to be too big to show sensibly on the screen. So it puts a row break in. Um, and we carry all the way up to the top, we get a header. So this starts to give you some idea of, of how we think about a data file. So we have data which is stored in a series of columns. Each column has a name, so this comes temperature, resistance, and column two. Um, and so we've got an index 0, 1, and 2 as well. Um, and then we have a, um, a, a bit of metadata about the measurement. So this is a rather minimal set that simply um, has things like a measurement title and a timestamp. Um, and in particular, it tells us it was loaded um, from this data file format. Um, and the magic string it looks for is this TDI format equals 1.5, which is the um, the, the sort of signature of this particular file format that's one that we use a lot in Leeds. Okay, so that's kind of what a measurement file looks like as far as we're concerned. We can look at its various subparts. So if I want to look just at the column headings, for example, they live under an attribute column headers. And there you can see there's the three of them. So column headers just returns it as a list of, of column heading attributes. Um, or I can look at the metadata um, associated with it, with the metadata attribute. That produces something which essentially looks a bit like a dictionary. Um, it's actually a, a subclass of a dictionary in that it tries to keep tabs of what type of data it thinks each um, bit of metadata, what type of um, what format of data you have there, whether it's a string or a floating point and so on. Um, this is actually because this file format is designed to interchange with National Instruments LabVIEW, and LabVIEW is a strongly typed language, and you have to go and tell it what type of data you're trying to import and export, otherwise it gets very unhappy at you. Um, but essentially the metadata just behaves like a dictionary. 
Okay, so what can we go and do with this then? Um, well, for example, if we would like to go and um, access a particular column, then um, we can get at these in a variety of ways. There is the uh, column method, um, and that will go and take something which can either be just an integer, so I just give it zero, in which case it's given me just that very first column, which goes from 291 Kelvin down to about 4.3 Kelvin. Um, I can also give it, instead of an integer, I can give it a name, in which case it looks in the column headers for the things that matches. If I give it a string that doesn't actually match any um, column directly, then it goes into a regular expression search on the column headers. We need to pick out just part of the column name. So this will return the same column because TEMP matches temperature. Um, and indeed we can also go further than that because we can um, uh, index things directly as a um, attribute of D. So assuming that your column names don't collide with any of our built-in um, methods, then it will decide, ah yes, what you meant was to show me the temperature column out of this data when you asked for the attribute of the data for a um, thing called temperature. So the basic rule here is that um, the library always tries to work out the, the most sensible thing it could be trying to ask, you could be trying to go and do with it. So it, it tries to be flexible and tries to guess what your intention was. Um, of course, it won't always get that right, but it, as far as it does, it tries. And in that vein, we can also treat it like it's a dictionary um, and index it with square brackets. And it'll also do exactly the same thing. So it depends what you're trying to do with it. If you um, go with an attribute, so the d.temp, for example, it first of all says, well, is this attribute um, one of my own methods or, or an existing attribute of the, of the data? And if it isn't, it says, OK, is this a column or is it something I could interpret as a column? So every time you want to refer to a column, you can use either an integer um, or a full name or part of a name, or you can even pass it a uh, compiled regular expression. It'll even use that to try and match up against the column names. So all of these things are producing the same column. It doesn't matter how you want to go about it, it does the same thing. When I do it like a dictionary, then the first thing it says, well, does that um, uh, key I've passed in, I'm asking it to get, does that match any of the metadata? And if it does, it'll go for that first. If it doesn't um, if, uh, at all, then it will go and think, does it match a column? And so it'll still return the same thing. If you pass it something which doesn't match anything at all, then it'll go and raise an exception at you and you'll get a key error. Um, that's sort of what standard Python is. Um, and you can see it's in fact dived a long way through the data there in order to do that. So um, you can access columns um, very, very easily just by trying to give a name or a part of name using it either as an attribute or as a dictionary or using the column method. All of those will get you the column. The last way you can do it is by using the floor division operator, so slash slash, and that will also do the same thing. Um, so to my mind, slash slash looks a bit like the um, separators of a column, so it means find me a column which matches that name. So d floor division zero also does exactly the same thing. So lots of different ways and it's really up to you to decide how you want to go and which one's more convenient to you but it'll try and always do a sensible thing for you. If you want to get the whole set of data all in one go then that lives in the data attribute so d.data. Now, you'll have seen when we're pulling out these data that it's actually a, a what's called a masked data array. So in other words, it, as well as the numbers you're storing, it's storing an array of booleans which indicate whether or not that value should be used, in which case the mask is false, or true, in which case it's, it's masked out. Um, we'll come back to this later. It's a way of um, selecting parts of your data for doing certain operations with. So if you want to fit your data over only a certain limited range, we can go and do that quite quite easily. And likewise, if you only want to plot part of your data set, then you can do that by setting an appropriate mask and it'll then miss out um, the, the, um, the things you've masked out. You can get at the mask 
by using the mask attribute d.mask and that will return just a boolean array which is the, the masking. Um, so the final thing I want to talk about is another really important concept um, in using the library um, and that's going to be the what we call the set as attribute. Now for a lot of the operations you want to go and do with this sort of data file obviously you want to work in columns because um, that's essentially how our data um, can be interpreted um, but typically often you know that one of those columns represents values that if you were plotting it would be on the x-axis and other of those columns represent things that would be on the y-axis. So for example an obvious thing in this data set is that you would say well maybe you want resistance versus temperature so I'd plot temperature on the x-axis and resistance on the y-axis. So I can define um, these different columns to say this is data that represents x and this is data that represents y and this is done using the, the set as attribute. So again it tries to go for maximum flexibility of different ways you can set it. So I can use set as as though it's a method and so I can do something like x equals temp, y equals res and it will interpret that to mean um, the x-axis is temperature and the y-axis is the resistance column. It does, does that. If I ask it uh, what that set as variable is, you'll see it's a list of x, y and dot and that corresponds to our three columns of data, meaning x data, y data and not assigned to anything yet. Now that's really useful because all the methods we use, if you don't explicitly specify x and y columns of data, it will look and see whether you've defined it via the set as. So a lot of the time you can make things very simple by starting off by defining what you want as your x column or your y column and then not having to worry about it and just working through with it. If you don't want to set your set as like that, you can do some things which are equivalent. So we have d set as equals x, y. If I It'll then use the first letter for the first column, the second letter for the second column, and if I run out of um, columns it'll just keep them as uh, dots. Um, so I can also do d dot x y. And there you see it's now x dot y. Um, so that would be treating that third column as my y column. I can also do d set as And do my keyword arguments do it as a call through like this, do it the other way around and again it has the same effect. Um, so again it's trying to work out what the thing you actually meant is um, as the most likely um, uh, thing to try and understand. Um, uh, and again it follows the general rules that when it's asking you to identify a column it'll take a, an integer to mean the index of the column or a name or a part of a name or a regular expression. It always tries to use the same, the same ways to identify what you mean as columns. So this just to give you a quick idea of why this is useful. So I've defined my x and y so now I can just do d.plot and there it goes and plots the data and because I've told it which is x and y data it plots the sensible thing. Okay so that was just a very quick run through of um, identifying columns of data and also um, of using the set as attribute.